Hey everyone, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here talking to you about two types of convergence for alternating series, absolute and conditional convergence. We've got the sum of 1 over n squared here, and I've got its alternating version. So we have 1 minus a fourth plus a ninth minus 1 sixteenth. If we want to look at which sum is larger, we can sort of notice the similarities and differences of these. Um, my odd number terms are all the same, 1 plus a ninth plus 1 over 25, etc. It's my even terms where we have sign differences here. So you'll notice plus a fourth versus minus a fourth, 1 16th versus minus 1 16th. We can probably tell that the top sum is going to be larger than the bottom sum. The list of partial sums will be bigger here because for the even terms we have a positive amount, but then we're subtracting off some stuff every even term. So this sum of regular old 1 over n squared is going to be bigger than the sum of the alternating 1 over n squared. If that's the case and using an idea similar to like a direct comparison test, we notice that the one on the right here is a p-series, p is 2, which is greater than 1, so we get that this is a convergent series. And if this one is less than that, this one adds up to some real number, then this one must also add up to some real number as well, right? It must also converge by comparison the fact that it's smaller than something that converges itself. If we take the absolute value of all the terms and we look at that series, and that series converges and this thing is smaller than that, because some of its terms are negative, then we would say that this alternating series converges absolutely. In other words, when we look at the absolute value of the terms and look at that series and that converges, and we know that that is larger, then this alternating series must also converge as well. This is called converging absolutely. It's absolute convergence. So if we're checking for absolute convergence, what we'll do is we'll take the alternating series that we're trying to analyze, we'll check the same list of terms, but imagine that they're all positive, so the absolute value of all of the terms, and we'll check and see if that converges. If so, then we'll say that our original alternating series converges absolutely. Converging absolutely is the stronger way out of the two of these absolute convergence and conditional convergence for an alternating series to converge. It's the stronger type of convergence of the two. If we look at a couple of examples here, we have the infinite sum of negative 1 to the n over n cubed. So if we think about checking for absolute convergence, so think about the sum of the absolute value of the formula, then for this example that's going to be the sum of just plain old 1 over n cubed. And we should know by looking at this that this is a p-series, and p is equal to 3, which is greater than 1, so we know that this converges, right? So when we take the absolute value of all the terms and we look at that series, we get that that series converges. So the original alternating series, we say, converges absolutely. And if you want to make a note of how we decided that it converges absolutely, you can also go ahead and say um, by the fact that this is a p-series. If we look at our second example here, we have the sum from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n factorial. Uh, this n plus 1 in the exponent is just saying we start with a positive term instead of a negative, um, but it's really kind of all the same. It's still an alternating series. So if we look here at checking absolute convergence, so we check the sum of the absolute value of terms, then that is going to be the sum of positive 1 over n factorial. And now we need to decide on a test to use for this. When I see a factorial, a good thing to use is the ratio test maybe. So we'll try the ratio test with this. When we do the ratio test, remember we take the limit of the n plus 1 term over the nth term. And so that's going to be uh, the limit of 1 over n plus 1 factorial divided by the original, uh, which will be like multiplied by the reciprocal, so we'll have n factorial on the top, 1 on the bottom. So that's going to be the limit then of, uh, if we reduce the factorial here with everything but the n plus 1 there, we'll get limit of 1 over n plus 1, and that limit is going to be 0. And when we get a limit of 0 from the ratio test, remember 0 is less than 1, and that's what matters in the ratio test. So we know that this series here converges, right? The absolute value version converges. If this one converges, then the original alternating series converges also. This converges absolutely. 
and if we want to be more descriptive then we could say that we used the ratio test to determine absolute convergence on that. Okay, for our last one here, we have the infinite sum of cosine of pi n over e to the n. Uh, this cosine of pi n, if you imagine plugging in like n equals 1 and then 2 and then 3, what we get is cosine of multiples of pi. So we get cosine of pi, which is negative 1, cosine of 2 pi, which is positive 1, cosine of 3 pi, which is again negative 1. So we're getting sign changes here out of cosine. Uh, it, it doesn't really look like it's changing signs, but if you think about when you plug in values of n, we're actually getting sign changes here. So this is an alternating series, um, but if I just think about what if all those terms were positive, then it would really just be the sum of 1 over e to the n. And if you think about what that is, that's actually, if I, maybe if I rewrite it as 1 over e all to the n, we can see it. This is actually a geometric series, right? So this is a geometric series, and r equals 1 over e. And 1 over e happens to be between negative 1 and 1. So as a geometric series, I know that this one would converge. So if this converges, then I know that this original series, my alternating series, this converges absolutely. Um, and we might make a note saying by geometric series. Okay, so that's a bit of absolute convergence. The alternating harmonic series, um, if we remember before from our last video, does some weird things. If we check absolute convergence for the alternating harmonic series, we would be checking the sum of just regular positive 1 over n. This is a p series and p is 1, so we should know that this series diverges. Now that doesn't mean this series overall diverges, that just means when we check for absolute convergence we don't get convergence. So our alternating harmonic series failed to converge absolutely, but it turns out that there's another way that it still might converge. The other way for this series to still converge would be for it to converge conditionally, and we say it has conditional convergence. This is a weaker type of convergence than absolute convergence. It turns out by rearranging the terms, we can show that something that's conditionally convergent adds up to any real number just based on how we rearrange the terms or we could show that it adds to infinity or negative infinity, depending on how we look at it. And that probably seems really strange when you hear that at first, and I agree. So let's sort of look at some intuition of conditional convergence and imagining how it works. In an alternating series that has conditional convergence, you're going to have an infinite amount of positive terms. So if you look at the positive terms, we'll have something that adds up to an infinite amount of stuff. And the negative terms also add up to an infinite amount of stuff. Imagine that we wanted to make our alternating series converge to 5. So what I do is I reach into my list of positive terms and I pull out just enough terms and the right combination of terms so that I get 5. And then I reach into my negative pile of stuff and I pull out enough negative terms from the right place so that I get negative 1. And then I go back to my positive pile and I pull out enough to make positive 1. And I keep then pulling out negative 1 and then positive 1 and negative 1 and positive 1. And then maybe down the line in my series I don't pull out negative 1 and positive 1. Maybe I pull out less than that. I pull out smaller amounts. Um, so basically I can make this thing dance right around the number 5 eventually and so I can show that this converges to 5. We could do a different type of thing where from the positive amount of stuff I pull out one at first and then from the negative amount of stuff I pull out let's say a half. So I pull out positive one and negative a half. So combine those that's going to add up to a positive half. And if I keep doing that then I would keep adding a positive half to the total, right? To my sum. Well if I keep adding up positive a half then eventually that's going to diverge and we could do sort of an opposite type of thing if we wanted it to diverge to a negative amount as well. So then the big question will be, how do we know if an alternating series converges conditionally? And the answer to that is we will check using the alternating series test to determine if something is conditionally convergent. The alternating series test is our next video in the series. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next one.